Matrix. I'm a badass goldfish, bitch. Oh my god. Hey everyone, it's Christian from Super Comic Guru 9000, and it's time to do a review of One Piece Chapter 540. Let's get started. The first of the many flashbacks we see this episode, well, I mean, this episode's kind of all flashbacks, which isn't a bad thing because they're all new, and I enjoyed almost all of them. Uh, we see a guy, or I should really say a fisherman, robbing a bank, and he has a mermaid as a hostage, and he's running, and then all of a sudden, the goldfish mermaid the former queen sees him, runs up to him, dodges his bullets all Matrix style. She ends up like slapping him in the face and putting him down. The goldfish mermaid queen ends up giving him a talking to and he's like, you don't even know what it's like because I'm poor and I have all these kids. And then she's like slapping him in the face and then she slaps him with her words. And she's like, do you think your kids want to be fed by all this stolen money anyway? And it makes him think. And we're starting to see that the goldfish mermaid queen is really trying to push the agenda of fishmen and people living together. We even see the goldfish mermaid queen having all the fishmen sign petitions to move the kingdom up to where all the humans are so they can start getting rid of all this prejudice. Also, the queen is a lot like her daughter as we're starting to see her be strong but also cry all the time. And something else to note is that the queen, I guess being a goldfish queen, she's very weak or fragile. They even mention that in the episode because after she slaps the robber, her hand is like a compound fracture and you see her later with a, you know, a cast over it. There's this one really badass scene and that's with all these pirates in a bar on Fishman Island and they start like harassing the waitress and they're like well who's gonna say anything to us we're fucking you know humans we can do whatever we want and then you see like Jim Bay over there smoking his pipe and he's just like you guys are starting to piss me off you're starting to ruin my food and there's like oh Never mind, and it's just reinforcing the fact that Jim is a complete badass, and even the humans don't even mess with him. We also learned that the Fishman District is kind of a rough place on Fishman Island, and it seems to be where all the orphans go, and where all the misfits or the people that lost their parents, and Jim Bay was saying that he grew up there, and this is kind of where Fishman Tiger ends up uh, coming from, and he was like the leader of this, like, I don't want to say band of, well, they, they call them misfits, but I think it's just people without a a real leader and that's where Fishman Tiger came in and uh, this is where Jimbei said uh, he went off to go have his own adventure uh, Jimbei joined the Neptune's army and then Arlong and some other people started like kidnapping kidnapping pirates or not pirates but kidnapping probably mermaids and other fishmen to sell into slavery and this is pretty messed up stuff we jump to Arlong hearing that very distinct laugh again which we haven't heard for a while in one piece and he's like harassing uh, one of the mermaids that's trying to sign the petition that the uh, goldfish mermaid queen was trying to get passed around and he's like what's the point of this the humans are scum blah 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 and then one of the soldiers comes and he just like chokes him out and is about to beat his ass and then Jimbe interjects and is like hey man look I'm working for the king I need to get those papers back to the queen because they're important and you need to stop beating up people and uh, my title is boss Jimbe and uh, Arlong is kind of laughing at this and then Jimbe calls him scum and they kind of start going at it and it's at this time Fishman Tiger comes in on his way to go see the king and queen. And uh, everyone's really excited to see him again. And they ask him about his adventures. After Fishman Tiger ends up going to the King Neptune's palace, they ask him about what he saw. And he says, like, humans. And then there's, like, fire that fades in. So you know it was hardcore. It was pretty intense. And then uh, he lets them know that he's about to go attack the celestial dragons pretty much and free all the slaves. And he wants to tell the queen this, mostly because he knows this is going to mess up her plans of, you know, helping fishmen and people be one. Is it just me, or is uh, Fishman Tiger's hippo shirt pretty awesome? I think I want one. Looks like Hungry Hungry Hippos. So the fishman named Tiger ends up going to the Celestial Dragon Island and freeing all the slaves. And so at this point, we see Jembe and Arlong join his crew, and they officially become Fishman Tiger Pirates. But not before they can put the Fishman Tiger Pirate symbol on their chest, and it's a big sun, and that's where we see how Jembe got that big symbol on him. And it's also covering up all the slave symbols if they were a fishman that was freed from, you know, obviously the Celestial Dragon uh, Slave Island. And that's how the episode comes to a close. My question this week, you guys, is are you excited to see the Fishman Tiger Pirates adventures? As we have Jimbe, Arlong, and the Fishman Tiger. Oh my gosh, you actually have a pretty good crew there. And I'm thinking about it, and it's a pretty good mix. You got Jimbe, who's pretty more pretty reserved, and then you got Arlong, who's kind of like this like hothead badass. And then you got Fishman Tiger, who's kind of like a mix between them both. So are you excited to see their adventures next episode? I know I am, and I can't wait to bring you guys that review. So until next time, Super Comic Guru 9000, out.
Oh, by the way, I give this episode an 8 out of 10. Peace. Peace. Peace.